We have some massive news as Flames general manager Craig Conroy has slightly revealed his plans going into free agency this offseason. Now, the Flames will have a very busy summer ahead with Jacob Markstrom's future with the club being unclear and with all of the draft picks that the Flames had, there's no doubt that this offseason is going to be nuts and we will take a look at all of that in this video here. Welcome to Flames Digest, I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here, you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe because around 83% of the people watching are not subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around the Calgary Flames, then make sure you stick around. But like I said, you know, Craig Conroy, he's slightly hinted on this busy summer that the Flames will have. Craig Conroy, all the talk about what he has done through his rookie season as GM is all about the trades, the trades he's made, the players he's traded away and obviously what the Flames have got. But now we're going to look ahead into the future a little bit and we'll look at an article that Frank Saravalli wrote. So GM Craig Conroy hints Calgary Flames could be players on free agent market this summer. Very, very interesting. Now, the Flames in the past have made some splashes at free agency. You think of what they did with Nazem Kadri a couple years ago. I think that's what they're kind of going to want to go for, more of a higher end forward. But we've also seen the Flames in the past make some not-so-great moves at free agency. You think back, unfortunately, to Troy Brower's time here in Calgary. You know, he was a former Stanley Cup champion, but just really wasn't great and ate up too much of that cap. So it's a it's a delicate balance. But without further ado, let's get, get into the busy summer ahead here. And like I said, Craig Conroy, you know, he's already had one summer under his belt where, you know what, he instantly traded away Tyler Toffoli and it ended up being a pretty good trade for the Flames. But this year's different because they have a lot of cap space and could sign some free agents. And like I said, I'm assuming they'd rather have some of the higher end free agents. It's just a matter if they'll want to sign in Calgary. And that's a big thing for Conroy is players who want to play in Calgary. But let's get into this article here. So busy summer ahead. Still in the relatively early stages of whichever R word you choose, rebuild, retool, reshape, it might be a surprise to think that the Calgary Flames would be a player in free agency this summer. But Conroy is already looking ahead to the market and thinking about what might be able to make Calgary more competitive. Think back to last Canada Day. There was no manager less busy than Conroy. He didn't sign a single UFA to a contract worth more than $1 million per season. One thing we didn't have last year was any flexibility on the cap, so we weren't able to add anything, Conroy said. So this year, to have some money and build the team and add some players is going to be big for us moving forward. Extremely true. Last year in free agency, the Flames pretty much did nothing. Nothing externally that didn't involve trades. And you think of how different the roster is now than it was at the beginning of Conroy's tenure. So think of the big players that were traded away. Toffoli, Lindholm. Tanev, Hannafin, you can throw in Zadorov. Even think of the starting lineup this year with, you know, Adam Ruzichkan, <laughs> whatever he's been consuming lately. We're all here in Calgary, and now it obviously looks very, very different. Maybe it'll look even more different and more insane come October of next year's opening day for the season. There could be some major free agents that could come to Calgary. And like I said, a big problem is that maybe some of them don't want to play here there's a chance that the Flames could do that with the cap space. So let's look at that. Calgary has roughly $19 million in space heading into the summer, with only $68.8 million committed to the $87.7 million upper limit. Don't expect the Flames to be whining and dining the big names on the market, but they will certainly be a player in the mid-tier for players willing to sign for the right term. If there's the right length of a contract, if there's a need that we have, we'll do that. It's hard to find certain players, Conroy said. Maybe to add a veteran or two would be something nice. We have a good mix. We're trying to let the young guys play, and that's still the priority. But if we can find help for two or three years, that's what we'd be looking for because it's hard to make trades for certain players, and we still want to be competitive. So there you go. They are not going to be signing any huge contracts for players that want to be here for a long time, unless somehow one of those, those players is interested in in the Flames signing long-term. I can't really see that with where the Flames are at right now as a competitive team or in competitive team, if you want to call it that. But either way, to get sort of a veteran that could play here for a bit, it sounds like another Troy Brower kind of situation here, but hopefully it'll be a little bit better than that and provide even more guidance. Um, so let's take a look at some of the potential UFAs that the Flames could be looking at this offseason. 
Now, I'm going to look at just the top UFAs going going into this offseason. It doesn't have to be Calgary's biggest targets or anything. I'm just talking about the top ones and ones who could maybe make it into a Flames jersey come uh, July 1st. But we will see. Let's take a look at the list here. So these are the top 12 UFAs after this season is done. And if you scan through the list really quickly, you'll see there's a lot of former Flames on it. But let's go top to bottom here. Sam Reinhart having an insane season, second most goals in the league. I think the Panthers will do everything they can in order to keep him. I do not see him being a potential suitor for the Flames. Next, Jake Gensel, a little more realistic, but once again, you know, an American guy. He wants to play in probably a competitive place. I don't fully see him being a guy who would come to Calgary either. Steven Stamkos, no way. The Lightning will do whatever they can to keep their captain who has brought them a couple cups. Also, just on that note, when are we going to talk about how Kucherov is the best player in Lightning history? I know a lot of old heads will say it's Le Cavalier or St. Louis. It's, it's Nikita Kucherov. Wow, that guy's insane. He should win the heart this year. Patrick Kane next. No chance he's coming to Calgary. Noah Hannafin. <laughs> uh, uh, I laugh at that one. Noah Hannafin. Is he going to be in a Flames jersey next year? <laughs> no. Next, Jonathan Marcheseau. This one is actually a little bit interesting. I would assume the Golden Knights will do what they can to keep him. He won the Conn Smythe last year. He won them the Cup. He's one of the original Golden Knights. I would assume they want to keep him there. But let's say they don't have enough cap space. There's potential that he could end up in Calgary. I mean, Jonathan Marcheseau and Jonathan Huberdo are similar names. Maybe they'd want to link up. Who knows? Now next, Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne for all the old fans. Matt Duchesne. That is definitely a possibility here. It sounds like he could go for one of those smaller contracts, two, three years. I know he's having a bit of a renaissance season here in Dallas. He's the man of the thumbnail, so I did want to focus on him a bit. But Matt Duchesne is definitely a potential guy that the Flames could bring in. Duchesne's time playing in Canada so far in his career hasn't been great. I mean, he kind of, the trade for him to go to Ottawa kind of destroyed the Senators as a franchise. They're still rebuilding because of it. He had an awful time there. And then thankfully for him, went down to Nashville and things got better. And he's been even better in Dallas. But his contract's over. And I don't know if Dallas is going to want to pay him over having some other guys while their window is still open. I would assume Dallas will pursue him and offer him you know, a reasonable contract, but the Flames might be able to offer him more money and kind of in that position that Conroy wants. Now, it's just a matter of if Duchesne would actually want to play in Calgary. But I think he is what the Flames do need. I mean, obviously, it'd be nice to have something better than Duchesne, but Duchesne is still a great player. He's shown in the past how good he is, and he could be a mentor to some of these younger guys, show them what it's like to be a young player in the NHL and maybe not quite meet expectations, and then still have a very good career and helping your team with whatever role they need. So Matt Duchesne, definitely a possibility. Joe Pavelski, no way. He will want to just win a cup. He's been waiting his whole career. He will go to a top contender. To Foley, maybe. I kind of doubt it. Lindholm, maybe. I kind of doubt it. Montour, uh, I'm not too sure. I, I think the Panthers will also try to hold on to him. But obviously, they'd rather get Reinhardt. And I think after this season... The Panthers might also want to commit to Forsling over Montour. But Montour, there is potential he could come to Calgary if he's given an outrageous contract. And I don't know if that is in the Flames' best interest. And then last there on the list, Monaghan. Now, it would be funny or at least nice to reunite with Toffoli, Lindholm, or Monaghan. I just don't see it being super realistic. Now, that being said, none of those are completely out of the question. I mean, they all know what it's like here in Calgary, especially Monaghan. Lindholm and Toffoli as well, but they're all players who, you know, they're kind of after a cup at this point, I would think, and the way that Monaghan is playing in Winnipeg right now, he'd probably want to stay there. Toffoli, depends what happens in the offseason, or sorry, in the postseason, um, for sure, with the Jets. Lindholm hasn't been great in Vancouver, but I kind of doubt he'd want to come back to Calgary, but never say never. So there's some potential suitors that could come to Calgary. Now, the last thing we'll touch on that Conroy spoke about is the goalie situation. We know a big part of the offseason is what will happen with Jacob Markstrom. Will he stay? Will he want to leave? Will he want to be traded away? Is he still unhappy with management and the organization? I guess we will have to find out. But here's Conroy's side of the situation. So Conroy said he intends to lay out the plan for Markstrom, including his intentions for free agency. It sounds like if Markstrom prefers to move on, the Flames will oblige. As Conroy said, he wants players who want to be in Calgary. That is such a big thing going into this summer. We need to sit down and talk, Conroy said. I need to see where Markey's head is at. 
if I can add something in free agency, what he is thinking. We just need to sit down and have a conversation after the season. Right now, I just want him to play and focus. He's been banged up a little bit, and hopefully he is back soon. He should be playing um, on Saturday against Vancouver. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how much he does play down the stretch here, and if he even looks like he wants to be here at all. Um, last thing, complicating manners in a good way is that goaltender of the future, Dustin Wolf, has been excellent. Wolf, 22, and the two-time AHL goalie of the year, has a 9.31 save percentage in four starts in March since Markstrom went down with injury. Wolf has played really well. Conroy said, I believe goaltending is the most sought after thing in the NHL. I told people coming into this season that I'm comfortable with all three goalies and that's going to be one of our big things here. We've got to figure that out, but when you have a position of strength, it's a great thing for the organization. Very true. And Vladar obviously is out for the season um, after go undergoing hip surgery. That'll happen next week, but hopefully he will be back fully healthy for the start of next season. And I know the Flames will be committed to him and his future with his one year left on his contract. He could be a potential um, piece that could leave at next year's trade deadline, but we will have to see. Either way, the goalie situation isn't the worst thing, and I'm sure Conroy will do what is best for the Flames and for Markstrom. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw here today, make sure you subscribe and have a fantastic weekend.